Hi, I'm Carolyn DeBear. I am co-founder of a footwear brand manufactured locally called The Bendy. And I am here today with Luigi Longobardo, who is with Fashion Connection New York and also represents uh, Grupo Mastroto Leathers uh, here in the United States. I'm using uh, the group of Mastrodo leathers in local manufacturing and just thought it would be wonderful to have um, an opportunity to hear about their sustainability initiatives and um, just get to get to know the products and how wonderful they are. So um, you want to take a few minutes and introduce yourself and then maybe jump into Fashion Connection New York and group of Mastrodo. Of course. Well, first of all, Thank you for having me. This is lovely and uh, it's a very great initiative and I'm glad to be able to be part of it. Um, so yeah, basically um, Fashion Connection started about 11 years ago uh, when I moved um, in the States. Uh, pr prior to that, I was working in um, textile. So I started in textile in Naples, in Italy, uh, with a small company that was basically transforming fabrics and sell it all over the world, and I was their export manager. And then from there, I moved to Tuscany, and I worked for a company over there. It was an actual mill, so I learned about fabrics. And then when I jumped uh, to the States, um, I had the opportunity to uh, meet people from, you know, from Grupo Mastrotto, from other tanneries in Italy, and they gave me the opportunity to learn, uh, you know, like the fantastic world of leather, uh, which I'm still learning every day mm -hmm. uh, after, you know, like 11 years. Um, started an agency here in the United States and basically it was, you know, just, uh, just by chances really in the beginning and it became a, a full-time job. Uh, and it's been Great. like, you know, for the past 11 years. Yeah. That's so, great. Um, yeah. Good. Well, we're going to pick your brain a little bit here. Uh, you know, really get into the nitty gritty, in my opinion, of um, leather and sustainability. There's a lot of controversy, right, around leather. And some say leather is sustainable, some say it isn't. Um, yeah. Can you just, you know, tell our viewers, tell people here, um, you know, what makes Grupo Mastroto leather sustainable, but also just kind of a background on leather and the industry and, you know, how that all fits together. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, this conversation about sustainability and leather and, you know, like alternatives to leather, it's, it's basically been my last two years of, of work, you know, like, uh, these days, every time I go to a meeting to present the collection, the first hour and a half, we normally talk about sustainability and you know there's a lot of misconception out there um, there is a lot of misinformation you know, not everyone knows really you know what's going on or you know there's just partial information so if it's okay for you i actually have um have a couple of slides that i've been okay. using in previous presentations mm -hmm. it can give us you know like it can help us a little bit um, just to give a framework. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's yeah, I see. think that's so helpful. It really gives people, you know, an idea and some information. Um, I think that's great. Can you see it? Do you see yes. my screen? I can okay. see it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Okay. So this was, you know, like the slide for my presentation. So the big picture, this is really an introduction, right, to, to the problem of sustainability. For some people, this might be a little bit, you know, like on the basic side, but I think it's worth, you know, like touching these points because you never know. So the big picture, so what makes leather a sustainable option and why some people say in reality it's not. So if you look at, you know, like the main misconception that every time I hear, right, it's like people call me and they're like, oh, you know, I don't want animal to be killed to make handbags or to make shoes. And so that's number one, right? So leather is a byproduct of the meat industry. You know, no animal get killed for, well, there are some animals, actually exotics, but the majority of the animals that we raise and, and, and we farm are basically raised for their meat, right? 
the, the leather is just a byproduct of the meat industry. Right. They're not raised for shoes, you mean? <laughs> yeah, no, no, not specifically, exactly. Right. Um, so because leather is a byproduct of the meat industry, I think that we need to look at both sides, right? Because the leather industry and the meat industry are strictly interconnected, right? So you cannot, you cannot talk about one side of you know, the whole spectrum. You need to check what's going on on both sides. So let's look at the leather industry first, right? So everything starts with farming, right? People have been farming animals you know, since the beginning of time, right? And they've been using um, animals to their advantage, obviously, you know, to eat their meat, so, you know, to survive, but also they've been using the skins to, to cover themselves, so to protect themselves from, you know, the, the, the cold weather, but also to adorn themselves, not necessarily just, you know, like um, a basic need, right? So in the modern age, uh, after the farming stage, we have the slaughterhouse, right? So when an animal, and feel free to interrupt me anytime. Yeah. So from the farm, obviously, when the animals are ready, they get transferred to the slaughterhouse. Now, from the slaughterhouse, there are two roads, right? So the first one on, on my left side of the screen is the one that we are analyzing now. So the leather industry, from, from there, there is the tannery, right? What a lot of people don't know is that the skins are actually a waste for the meat industry. So when, after the animal are slaughtered, right, in the slaughterhouse, the slaughterhouse technically has nothing to do with the skins. Um, without the tannery on the other side that process the skin further to create another product, it would basically be a waste right for the meat industry so this is very important and we're going to see it down the road from tanneries obviously then you know skins are sold to manufacturers brands you know and then we have all the final products that we know and love you know like all the leather products small leather goods shoes and handbags so what are the main points uh, that are good right because what the what the leather industry does is actually to subtract a waste from what is considered you know like a discard a discharge for the for the meat industry which eventually without the tanneries and without the leather industry would just go and feel the landfill right so contributing to uh, pollution at the end of the day so the leather industry all right we have Point number one, which is, you know, something that we already said, only the exotics animals are really raised and farmed for their hides, mm -hmm. which these days we're seeing it's not even like it used to be anymore. You know, a lot of brands moved away from exotic, real exotics, you know, like crocodile, crocodile snakes. Uh, but at the end of the day, those animals are the only animals that are raised so that ultimately you can use their skins. The skins is the main value of the animals, right? Right, which is the opposite of what the meat industry does. Correct, right. yes. Okay. Our hides account for 1% of the total value of the animal. Um, if you think about it, like um, the, the tongue of the animal or the cheap meat, it's actually, 3% or 4% of the value. So it's considered more um, interesting, right, for the market than the hides. The hides are really, you know, something that the meat industry has nothing to do with. You know, it's, they cannot do anything with it. So that's another thing. Again, if the leather industry would not use those leather, 10 tons of skins are discharged every year by the meat industry. So what do you do with all the skins if you don't use it to create leather goods? Yeah, imagine that everyone moves away from leather goods, right? Now you have 10,000 skins that you have to find a place to put, 
right? No, my understanding too is that meat consumption um, is up. And if meat consumption is up, what are you going to do with those excess hides? Absolutely. You, right? I think that's yeah. part of the equation for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfectly right. Okay. Um, another point where, you know, that goes, you know, on, it's, it's a good one for the leather industry is that the leather industry itself generate other byproduct in the process. So, you know, like the tanning process, the dyeing process, um, mm -hmm. when the skins arrive to the tanner and then they are further on process to create the leather, all, um, the other materials that are discharged, uh, and, you know, that are considered waste now for the for the tannery for the leather industry are used to make for example gelatin for the food industry or you know like some other product you know like fertilizer you know, is something that i heard i've heard right, right? yes yeah. fertilizer uh cosmetics you know like uh right. so so the leather industry is a good example of what we call a circular economy to a certain extent right mm -hmm. where we utilize something that is considered waste so in a way we recycle that material to do something else and by doing something else we create something uh, that other industries can uh, themselves use to make another product so so it's a it's a you know something that it's it's all positive here right, right. Um, so, That's for sure. Right. Exactly. So it, it's all good, but so where is the bad, right, in this whole equation? Why there are some people that say that that leather is not good for the environment, and why there are so many people that are trying to move away from leather? Right. And I think that at this point we need to talk about the, the, the meat part, right? So right. the food industry, the meat industry, because I think that the problem right now lies in this part of the process right, right? so let, let's look at some of the data that comes from, mm -hmm. from the industry right so animal agriculture in the world is the leading cause of habitat destruction species extinctions water pollution and these are you know like Beside the 18% of the total greenhouse uh, gas emission that come from animal, animal agriculture, these are big issues that you know we're facing right now. If you look at what happened um, and what is still happening, you know, like with the destruction of the, the Amazon forest, for example, you know, we all have heard of you know the so-called wildfires uh, in the Amazon forest that are not so wild. Um, you know, in reality, the, the Amazon forest get destroyed to make more room to, 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 to farms, mm -hmm. right? So to, to raise animals. And we saw in the last 10 years, you know, 10 years ago, the, the rate of destruction of the Amazon forest was completely out of control. Then the government, you know, the Brazilian government, uh, you know, obviously after a lot of pressure by the international, you know, community, they slowed down um, the destruction of the forest. But in the last two years, we saw, um, you know, the rate of the destruction of the forest going up again. In the last couple of years, we saw almost over 3,000 square miles of forests getting destroyed, which is basically an area bigger than our Yellowstone Park. Right. So, so that's a big issue. And it's not just you know, the forests, they get destroyed. Species, obviously, you know, species, wild species, they leave in the Amazon forest in this case, but also in other areas, you know, that have the same uh, destiny are basically getting destroyed. Predators, you know, natural predators get killed because obviously the farmers want to protect the animals, right? Right. And of course, you have the problem of the water pollution. So all the, the chemicals that, you know, the farmers use to grow crops um, get discharged into the water. Mm -hmm. uh, the greenhouse gas emission is another problem. You know, like one third of the world, uh, it's farmed with rain, 
basically to produce grain to feed mm -hmm. the cows. So, it, you know, it's, it's a big issue. 18%, it's actually more than what the whole transportation system produces. If you put together cars, airplanes, mm -hmm. naval transportation, trains, it, it accounts for 13% of the total gas emission. So the agriculture is probably the number one causes of the, the, green the greenhouse okay. gas emission in the atmosphere, which is huge. Okay. okay, that's great to know, um, definitely. Oh, wow. Again, yeah. livestock, nitrous oxide, 65%, water consumption, um, I, you know, like it's, um, there is, there is, a figure that it's scary. Like in 1981, um, scientists basically calculated that 2,500 gallons of water wow. are needed to produce one pound of meat, That's which crazy. is actually scary. No, yeah. it's crazy. Well, you look at it, and there's so many. There's like the pros and the cons, yeah, and of course, the, yeah. And people are not going to stop eating meat. Uh, you know, people eat meat. And so there is something that has to happen with those hides, with those skins, because yeah. the consumption is so high. I mean, I look at these, this information for the meat industry, and it's heartbreaking, but I know yeah. that people are going to continue eating meat. And so, you know, Definitely. right, that's crazy. It is, it is crazy. And it's something that obviously the leather industry, you know, at some point, which is happening already, right? Because yeah. brands are pushing the leather industry basically to sit down with the meat industry and try to understand how together uh, they can solve the problem, right? Because, because if people lose faith um, or, you know, like start considering the, the meat industry like the enemy, like the evil in this situation, obviously the leather industry will be affected too, as we've seen happen. Right. Well, I think that's great. I mean, something to think about. I love, you know, hearing that that there is a level of collaboration and Absolutely. that um, that they realize they need to work together to reduce those emissions, to reduce, you know, all of the nitric uh, nitrous oxide, all of that. I think that that's really important. Um, so I guess it kind of leads to my next question. Um, you know, you're from Italy. You are importing uh, Grupo Mastrotto leathers. I know because I'm using them in uh, manufacturing in Los Angeles. So what makes Italian leather a good choice? What makes, um, you know, the Grupo Mastrotto leathers a good choice? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, actually, that brings me, you know, to there is another slide oh, here. Great. So. Okay. Go. So oh, make go. the choice even better. This slide was not prepared specifically for Grupo Mastrotto. I oh. I added, you know, like what we're doing right now uh, sure. with Grupo Mastrotto, so we're gonna see it. But in general, what tanneries are doing and what we're doing, you know, Grupo Mastrotto was probably one of the first uh, tannery in Italy uh, that uh, became part of the LWG, which is something that you know we can talk about. Right. Um, I think that at the end of the day, what the tanneries have to do now um, to, to solve the problem that, you know, it's going on with the food industry and obviously that it's affecting also um, the, the leather industry is first of all to create transparency, right? So right. people need to know uh, what are the processes, where you know, where are the skins coming from? So where are the points, right? So number one, you want to have traceability, right? So traceability is one of the terms that we hear more often right now when we talk with brands. What does it mean, traceability? We need to know where the skins are coming from, right? right? If you want to avoid, so this, this is already used, for example, with the exotics, right? With the exotic animals, if you take a crocodile, right? We know uh, the life, basically the, the life of the crocodile is monitored from birth to the slaughterhouse, to the final, you know, leather manufacturer, to the bag that it's used. Mm -hmm. You know, there are uh, barcodes or, you know, like codes that are attached to the animal for his entire life because those are endangered species, so they have to be controlled. 
But the ultimate goal here is to create the same kind of traceability also for cowhides. Right now, it's very difficult because there's so much, it's so much spread out, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the chain, the distribution chain. But the majority of the tanneries right now can only trace the skins back to the slaughterhouse. Right, not all the way back to the farm, right? And that's what you're working towards? Mm -hmm. Correct. So what we're working on right now is to go back to the farms, or at least to have an idea of the region, you know, mm -hmm. like where the skins are coming from. Um, for, for, for us, with Grupo Mastrotto, one of the first um, companies that move into this direction you know, that ask us is a company in, in actually in the upholstery business. The upholstery business and the automotive industry also um, moved, you know, like ask about traceability five or six years ago already. And we did a whole study for them, for this specific company, uh, because, you know, we have a tanner in Brazil as well. So we did a whole study to make sure that the skins that, they were, that we were using for them we're not coming from any area in or um, basically uh, close to the Amazon forest. So, oh, you know, okay. they want to be uh, sure about that. So traceability is, is a big issue. Water consumption, uh, that's another big issue right now, right? All the tanning process uh, require a big amount of water. Um, and also, if you think about it, you know, like even before tanning, this, the raw hides are um, um, basically are put under salt. There's a lot of salt used to conserve the skins before they get actually tanned. And so water, there's a, a, a huge amount of water that's used to wash the skins, you know, to prepare the skins for the tannage process, and also the tanning itself. So tanneries now, there's, there, there are companies, but also tanneries that are trying to find alternative ways um, to tan the leather, maybe conserve the skin, um, dry out the skin. You know, they dry the skin okay. from, from the water content in the beginning, so they don't have to use salt to conserve them. And then they, they heat, 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 hydrate. Sorry, they put water in the skin. Yeah. So, you know, or they, they can make production from the fresh skins, you know, without using salt at all. There's a lot of, you know, different technological advancement now in the processing of raw hides and the tanning with the target of lowering the water consumption. Uh, obviously, you know, restricted chemical substances, you know, Europe, United States are very strict on you know, the, the list of chemical substances that cannot be used, um, not just in the tanning process, in the leather, but in everything that gets directly in contact with our skins, you know. Um, so that's very important as well. Renewable energy sources. Um, so what do you use to make energy to run the tannery? Are you still burning coal? Uh, no. <laughs> right. I mean, I was, I was shocked. I went to these, to visit these tanneries in China and they're using and, coal. Yeah. There's some tanneries in China still burning, like literally like shoveling coal, you know, mm -hmm. like Oliver Twist and, uh, you know, like, right. So, that, that is scary. And so you want to have tanneries that are using for as much as they can um, renewable energy sources, solar. Um, Mastrotto has a very nice uh, cogenerator uh, plant. Right. That was one of the things, yeah, that appealed to me the most about them. I'd love to, you know, have you tell a little bit about it. It was kind of one of the things I found the most fascinating was that um, they recycled the energy and there was something about how the steam from the hot water or something was used to provide the electricity for their office buildings or something, if you can, yeah, I mean, I don't know the details, but it was something uh, like well, that. Basically a cogenerator plant without going into the, you know, the specific or the details, um, it's a much more efficient way to produce energy, right? So the, the, uh, the old, 
or the what do you say how do you say it the, the, the classic way we normally produce energy think, think about like a, like an electric generator right an electric generator uses um, a source of energy that can be you know like coal or natural gas uh, to create energy right to create electric energy but the problem is that in the process a lot of the energy gets wasted uh, in the form of heat right so the, the classic um, uh, way of creating electric power uh, most of the time end up transforming the original source of power just 35 to 40 percent of the original power gets transformed into electric energy the rest 65 percent 70 percent gets wasted in the form of heat right okay mm -hmm. what cogenerator does is basically utilizing that heat putting into the circle to create energy itself right so right. you have the first 35 percent of electric output right that gets to you know to the tannery and then you have the heat which is created in the process that is channeled again and creates more power more electric power so at the end of the day you only have a 15 percent of energy that gets wasted um, in the process that's so amazing it, yeah, yeah it's a much more efficient, you know, cut costs, you know, it's, it's, right. it was very expensive, but, uh, you know, in the long run, uh, it pays off. So it's also very important. Uh, and of course, you know, like going forward, you know, like work environment, social responsibilities, these are all um, points, you know, these are all part of, you know, like the sustainable conversation. And again, transparency and the load right. of the leather working group. So, so the leather working group was one of the first uh, association born a few years ago uh, with the intent of creating transparency, right? Um, in the leather industry. And it's now become the gold standard um, for tanneries specifically um, to right. understand to understand how they manage these processes. Yeah, uh, no, so. I know it's one of the first questions I ask is, you know, what's their certifications, right? If I'm talking to somebody and if I understand correctly, the leather working group, they have like gold, silver and bronze or something right. to that to that degree and that they trace everything and you can see what the standards are and, and all of that, which uh -huh. I have found really helpful you know, myself in researching, um, you know, partners, right? Yeah. So, uh, no, it's, it's very important. And you have, you know, the leather working group was started uh, by company. There was, it was a panel uh, in which there were like Nike, Coach. So, mm -hmm. you know, people that have always pushed um, the agenda, right? That have always pushed for a more sustainable, Right. Um, way of approaching this the industry and and right now there's a lot of companies that you know uh, put the le put their certification you know like silver or gold as one of you know the the, the conditions and if one on uh, yes. to work with them so so a lot of tanneries in Italy and in the world are mm -hmm. considering are moving in that direction so it's something that you have to, to look for um okay so oh, great so kind of the next question um is about the difference between you know using plastic recycled plastic vegan materials i guess versus leather materials and while there are benefits to to different things um you know kind of what's the difference between that right these oil-based products fossil fuels and these bio-based products i'd be you know, if you can kind of tell us a little bit about that. Sure, definitely. That's that's another, uh, you know, the one million question that right. uh, goes to all the customers, you know, like, and there's been a lot of talking about, like, you know, like the vegan leather, vegan leather. So tanneries gets upset when they hear vegan leather because, you mm -hmm. know, they think that someone is trying to steal away the term leather from them. Uh, right. Leather. Um, so, yeah, the... the at the end of the day, vegan leather or, you know, like 
like I'd like to call them um, man-made materials. It's what we used to call PU, right? Um, basically, a plastic. So it was originally um, a, a an oil-based material, right? So it's basically a liquid coating that it's created uh, with um, uh, substances that directly come from petroleum, from oil, uh, that it's coated on, on, on a support that can be fabric, that can be non-woven materials, and creates something that looks like leather, you know, feels like leather, uh, but it's not leather, right? Um, I have to say that today it's not like it used to be. Uh, so new technologies, you know, have have come in, step in. There is a lot of advancement, in, especially in the world of man-made materials. So th there was a huge step forward in creating now materials that are much more eco-friendly, uh, that are much more sustainable um, under that point of view. You know, like they, uh, instead of using uh, oil-based materials, now they're using, um, bio-based materials, so um, materials that come directly from processing corn, for example. So something that um, they started to do, actually, and Mastotto was the first tannery to join um, some of these companies that have their material tested, was the, the USDA um, bio-based certification. So what is the USDA? So you, we know the USDA, right? Uh, right, yeah. I'm thinking maybe we should have you stop sharing your screen or do you have another slide? Oh, you yeah, can... sure, definitely. Yeah, um, we can do that just so we can kind of, yeah, there we are. <laughs> um, stop sharing. Yeah, there you are, <laughs> a little more close up. Perfect, yeah. okay. Yeah, so uh, my understanding is that um, Grupo Mastroto was the, one of the first to get this USDA certification and I didn't understand what that really meant. So I love, um, you know, you being able to explain that to us because I think that's kind of a new thing. Yeah, so basically um, what the USDA does, you know, the Department of Agriculture, the American, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, we, you know, we saw, we in the United States also the, the, the label, right? When we go to the grocery store, you know, we buy products right. that are considered natural. And uh, we, we also saw the, the certification from the USDA. If you apply that to leather or to man-made materials, right? What the USDA does and, and what we have done, we basically send them samples. They test the materials. Um, I think against the, 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 the carbonium-14, which is the same test that archaeologists use to date um, pieces that they find, right? To understand to what age, you know, how old they are. Um, so the USDA used the same test to understand what kind of bio-based content exists in that specific materials. And how old? The, the, the carbon basically um, based material, carbon based materials are inside that particular um, material. So the oldest being the, the carbon based materials, the less uh, renewable that material is, right? So if you think about something that comes from oil, right? This is just you know, that you, can, you can get there just by common sense, right? Oil takes like millions of years to, to form, right? So what we're burning right now, or we're using for our cars or for a plastic product or anything else to utilize uh, oil-based uh, substances come from something that it's been created with millions of years and it's been there for millions of years. Well, and it takes that long to decompose, right? You can yeah. make something out of recycled plastic, right? Which gives it a second use and then maybe a third use, fourth use, but it's still gonna take those millions of years or however long to break down versus something that's bio-based is my understanding, right? 
Correct. Yes. So if you take something um, like, you know, a skin, uh, which number one comes from an animal whose life cycle is, you know, five years. So even under that point of view, it's, it's a renewable source, right? Even if it's an animal. Um, and, and it's a natural product, so it will naturally decompose uh, much more so than a plastic. So if you take, for example, uh, an index that goes from zero to 100, where 100 is, you know, the best, right? And, and the lower you go, the less um, uh, renewable it is in terms of, you know, like how long does it take to go back in the circle? Right. Leather goes like 60, 70 versus um, uh, plastic-based material can perform, you know, like around 15, 20, or even six, if it's, you know, like the old way of creating, you know, like plastic materials. Okay. So it's, it's very interesting. Amastrotto was one of the first uh, tannery to obtain the, the, the certification. Mm -hmm. um, in other steps, um, I don't know if you have any other question here. About that, um, no, I, it's great. I think it's it's really, I mean, to me, it's really fascinating just because I've used leather for, you know, over 30 years to make footwear. And currently, um, you know, it's interesting. In the U.S., I know that uh, La La Land, the factory in downtown Los Angeles that makes footwear, um, they warehouse leather there so they'd stock lots of you know the colors and so you're able to get the leather locally pretty quickly which again you know reduces transportation and when i think about what the tannery is doing they've um really have a lot of sustainability you know sort of initiatives so yeah think, wow. um, you know i think it's amazing um i guess you know one other question i have is you know I know that you represent them, but tell me about, um, you know, Fashion Connect New York. What, um, you know, what kind of things do you have there that would speak to sustainability initiatives too? Well, you know, we work with other tanneries, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. We work with tannery in India, uh, Prime, that are also, you know, like uh, in the LWG group. Uh, but in terms of sustainability, I think that the other most interesting thing is the product from Coronet. Uh, they are actually manufactured for, uh, for man-made materials, uh, but they were able, um, they have several production facilities in Asia and also in Italy. Um, and in their facility in Italy, they were able to create uh, this collection that they call BioVeg, um, which is really interesting. That is also USDA certified bio-based. Mm -hmm. And they were actually able to, to get to a point of like 60 or 70% um, um, of a product that it's uh, bio-based. You know, like mm -hmm. the USDA uh, gives you percentages, right? To, um, to certify how much that particular article is bio-based, so contains um, elements that are actually renewable and they can actually decompose. Okay, and, and what is it called? What was the material called? Well, the collection is called oh. bio -Veg. Uh, bio -Veg. okay. Yeah, and they have several articles inside these collection, this collection. Um, and, you know, a lot of brands uh, that are decided to move to became vegan mm -hmm. uh, are using them not just because they're not leather, but also because what they do is sustainable, uh, mm -hmm. right? The, the fact of not using leather just for the argument, you know, like that you don't want to use um, like animal-based materials, mm -hmm. um, sometimes can be a little, um, you know, not, it's not sustainable by itself because if you switch from leather to a regular PU, at the end of the day, you're not doing anything for the environment. You actually are doing something worse. Right. Because what you're putting into, into your product, it's something that eventually it, it will not decompose. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people, you know, when we talk about sustainability, 
um, big issues are, you know, for people, the production process, right? The initial part of the process, which is definitely important. So the traceability, uh, where the skin's coming from, what are you using? Leather, are you using man-made materials? This is all important. But I think that also one very important thing is the end of the life cycle of a right. Um, well, it's this concept of circularity, right? And end of life, right? There's been a lot of conversations about end of life, end of use, and what yeah. do you do with it? And something I've been talking about is glue on shoes, right? You put glue on the leather, glue on the recycled plastic, whatever it might be. Yeah. It, you're, you can't deconstruct that product to use it again well, unless you know maybe you do something else, you grind it up or something. But that's exactly it. So how you know, right? How do we create that circularity and end of life for yeah, product? Exactly. And in the leather, for example, uh, one of the other issues that emerged, um, it's the problem with chrome, for example, mm -hmm. right? So the, what we define chrome is basically the, the main uh, chemical that it's used in the tanning process, right? right. So chrome is everywhere, but the problem with chrome is that it's in its natural form, it's totally harmless. Uh, but if you burn it, or if mm -hmm. you put it in landfill, eventually it can turn into a chrome six, which is highly toxic, right? So now, again, in the conversation with sustainability and with the end of life in mind, right? Because mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't know, you know, many times I hear, for example, of like big warehouse that have like lots of unsold leather bag and they just incinerate it, which is the worst thing you the can do. The worst thing that you can do with it, right? Leather product, right? Because right. not creating something that is toxic. So creating leather that it's metal free or chrome free eventually will help um, with that as well, right? So what do you do if you eventually have to destroy the bag or you have to, to do something you know it's easy it's more as you say you know like it, the glue is a problem because you cannot it reuse it, right so no the glue is a problem there are a lot of things i mean you want to make a shoe right that you no. can do string lasting right where there is no glue you are not attaching it with um to the outsole with glue there are lots of different options um Mm -hmm. that I think we can look into and, you know, natural dyes versus chrome dyes, natural dyes from what I understand can sometimes, you know, be used in some of the lighter colors, you know, so right. there are lots of options. And the exciting thing is that with technology as it is today and innovation as it is today that we're able to do a lot of these things that we weren't able to do um, that are just so helpful now. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, it's great. It's great. Well, I'm so grateful that we got to talk today and hopefully we're leaving viewers with a little bit more information about how leather's yeah. made, about sustainability as it relates to leather, about uh, the good and the bad. And, you know, things like the meat industry collaborating with um, the leather industry and much more. So absolutely. It would be great to have people, um, you know, know where to get in touch with you, Luigi. Uh, and, you know, if you can maybe give us that info, if anyone has any questions or wants to follow up and become even more knowledgeable about leather and sustainability. Um, yeah. yeah well, we we are, well, we are in New York, of course. I mean, uh, the main right. office is in New York City. I know that it's hard to travel right now, uh, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, if you want to come see us at the office, you're more than welcome. I mean, things are going to get back to some kind of normality. Otherwise, we have a website that it's www.fconnectny.com um, where you can find obviously, you know, all the info of all the portfolio of companies we work with. Um, in recent days, um, we also created a virtual showroom where you can see the articles again because we cannot present them in person mm -hmm. at least um, a nice hopefully a representation of the articles in the digital uh, world. Right. And you also find information about sustainability and um, about leather in general. And you can find all the contacts, you know, to reach us 
on yeah. the website. Yep. Well, that's great. Well, thank you. I'm so grateful. Um, and I feel like I learned a lot today and I'm sure the viewers will feel the same. So thanks, Luigi. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.